Let us ponder for a minute. What would happen if our sun went out unexpectedly? For an hour, for a month, or perhaps for a whole year? What would become of humanity? The last photons from our star's surface, as well as the last particles in the solar wind, have begun their final journey to Earth. Nobody suspects that our solar system's heart has quit working. The sky rapidly darkens eight to nine minutes later. The entire globe is enveloped in darkness. Whether it's the deep dark of midnight or a bright sunny noontime at your location, you can tell the difference quickly and effortlessly. The stars are now all vividly visible against the sky's utter blackness. The moon is no longer visible because there is no longer any sunlight to reflect. Due to variations in the magnetic field around the Earth and disruptions in the ionosphere, dazzling northern lights may occur just before the beginning of total and shrouding darkness. The most horrible outcome is the complete and total halt of photosynthesis, resulting in plants and cyanobacteria no longer creating oxygen. This will quickly lead to, how shall we put it, issues for all living things. After an hour, real panic reigns across the Earth's present-day side. Power and communication failures spread around the globe. Temperatures decrease by several degrees worldwide, and the Earth's surface begins to cool gradually. However, the planet is still heated from within by its molten core. After 24 hours, morning has not arrived and will not arrive. Panic and turmoil have engulfed the entire world, and state officials have little control over the situation. Humanity is still attempting to figure out what happened while dealing with massive power and water outages. The temperature on the surface drops between 5 degree to 7 degree C. That's 41 degree to 45 degree F, which has now dropped by 15 degree to 20 degree C. That's a temperature reduction of nearly 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Some plant and microbe species are dying. For the time being, the ocean's inhabitants are experiencing essentially no changes. It's still dark after seven days. The current global average temperature is minus 17 degrees Celsius. That's around one degree Fahrenheit. It's still heated where there are tectonic faults. Because of geothermal energy, the surface does not ice over. Most plants have already died as a result of the cold or a lack of light. Herbivorous and heat-loving species are also dying. Phytoplanktons are also dying in the oceans. The residents of shallow seas are suffering greatly from the cold, and the ocean's surface is beginning to freeze to ice. Scientists and others have grasped what has happened and have hastened to organize and equip shelters. After one month, the Earth is still cooling. The average surface temperature is presently at minus 30 degrees Celsius, that's minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, and nearly the entire globe is now covered in ice. Almost all plants and cyanobacteria have died, some tree species, particularly conifers, are still living. However, due to a lack of sunlight, even they are unable to produce oxygen. In truth, the majority of Earth's living things have died. However, some bacteria continue to live their normal lives. The majority of the remaining life on Earth can now only be found around geothermal springs and underwater. Surprisingly, the layer of ice on the ocean's surface delays their cooling and the water is still warm around oceanic tectonic faults and geothermal sources, being naturally heated, of course. Even in the ocean, though, the drama of a mass extinction event begins to unfold. After one year, the Earth's surface and oceans are coated with a thick coating of ice. According to Caltech researcher David Stevenson, the temperature on the Earth's surface should plummet to around minus 40 degrees Celsius, or the equivalent in Fahrenheit. Life now exists only deep inside the Earth's seas, and certain groups of humans may be able to survive on the planet's surface in places like Iceland and other areas with high geothermal activity. Professor Stevenson believes that the Earth will continue to cool for thousands of years, until the surface temperature reaches minus 160 degrees Celsius. That is approximately minus 256 degrees Fahrenheit. Life on Earth in the traditional sense will be rendered impossible at that point, not to mention the Sun's gravitational pull. After all, the sun's gravitational attraction is unlikely to be lost if it abruptly goes out. If the sun stops keeping the planets and other celestial bodies in orbit, the planets and asteroids will simply fly away into space. Some of them may even collide with each other. The Earth, for example, will be launched into deep space, where it may be pummeled by asteroids, comets, and radiation, collide with another planet, or perhaps end up in the gravity well of a black hole. There's also a very small chance that after a very long period traveling through space, the Earth will be able to merge into another star system and locate a new sun. However, it is critical to recognize that this scenario is really a fiction. Or to put it another way, 
a thought experiment. In terms of our star's true fate, it will enlarge and convert into a red giant in a few billion years. Our star will devour Mercury, Venus, and Earth, and will heat up to several thousand degrees. The sun will erupt and eject its outer envelope in five billion years. A steadily cooling star core remains at the heart of the solar system, a white dwarf that will orbit whatever is left of the solar system after the explosion. Humankind's fate is undetermined. Hopefully, by that time, we will be able to fly to other worlds and star systems. But that's another story for another time.